as I referred to during my last video about the early origins of modern day horses, these animals has some very strange and extinct relatives. Calicotheridae, meaning gravel beasts, is a 100% extinct and extremely fascinating group of extinct perissodactyls, with genre ranging across Afro-Eurasia. This family is unique for their horse-shaped skulls and unique plantigrade forelimbs, which allowed the animals to essentially knuckle-walk like gorillas. They were essentially when ungulates tried to resemble ground slopes, even though the two groups are not even near related. There are two subfamilies within this one family, but the subfamily I want to talk about in this video is Calicotheronae. This clade survived from the very earliest Miocene all the way up to the Pleistocene, meaning they occupied a very wide temporal range. The very earliest genus within Calicotheronae was the genus Calamansa, which lived from 23.03 to 5.33 million years ago, from the very earliest Miocene to the very latest Miocene. Calamansa had teeth that were long and low, being very well adapted for browsing. This genus had a proportionally shorter snout compared to later Calicotheres, and on the very same head was a very odd dome-like structure likely used for ramming against other individuals, similar to the head-budding pachycephalosaurs. The namesake of both this subfamily and the family as a whole, Calicotherium, was next, living from the middle to the late Miocene epoch. Unlike Calamansta, which was confined to Bulgaria, Calicotherium spread very far and wide all across Eurasia and Africa, likely inhabiting a range of habitats. This animal was also pretty decently sized compared to other members of Calicotheronae, with a height of likely around 3 metres and a weight of possibly up to 800 to 1,000 kilograms, which isn't actually that large for later perissodactyls, though still larger than most horses. As Calicotherium reached sexual maturity, their incisor and upper canine teeth began to shed, resulting in gum pads likely making these animals browsers of soft vegetation. Calicotherium seems to have been a very convergent animal, very closely resembling a lot of later or much earlier animals, like Therizinosaurid dinosaurs, ground sloths, giant pandas, and great apes. A descendant of Calicotherium, Anisodon grande, lived towards the end of the Miocene epoch in what is today Europe. This genus was actually pretty small for a member of Calicotheronae, being shorter than a human at only 1.5 metres and weighing about 600 kilograms. Similar to the earlier Calicotherines, the forelimbs of this genus were likely used for gripping vegetation, bringing it closer to its mouth for consumption, and for deterring possible predators, like canids and ursids, or dogs and bears. So far, all of the Calicotherids mentioned went extinct before the Pliocene Epoch, but this was very soon about to change. Nestorotherium, another descendant of Calicotherium, likely lived around 11.6 million years ago, during the mid to late Miocene. The genus is known from fossil sites all across Myanmar and China, and it survived very recently until only 781,000 years ago as recently as the very middle Pleistocene epoch. Nestorotherium was likely ancestral to the other Calicothere alive at this time, Hesperotherium. Living so recently, these animals would have actually experienced the last ice age, or at least the onset to a glacial maximum. And yes, while these animals were around, they did encounter some very strange creatures. Gigantopithecus was a very close relative of modern day orangutans, and it was the largest primate to ever exist as far as we know, growing up to 3 metres tall and weigh up to 300 kilograms. Another contemporary of the two Calicotheres that lived at this place and time was Cynomastodon, a member of Gompotheridae, which is a family of proboscideans that I already have a video on. Link in the description for that. Among all of these very impressive animals, Hesperotherium and Nostosotherium wouldn't have seen that impressive but they were in another way other than size and appearance. 
An example of this is Ponganae, the group that contains orangutans and Gigantopithecus, which appeared 18.5 million years ago. After Calamansa had already gone extinct and Calcotherium was reigning over Afro-Eurasia. Unfortunately, just as all other Calcotherids did, both Hesperotherium and Nostocetherium would eventually go extinct. However, three quarters of a million years ago, these animals were roaming the Indian subcontinent as long gone relics, and that was well under a million years ago. Next episode, I'll be discussing the other subfamily within Calcotheridae, Schizotherinae. I'll see you all then. Bye.